Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I uh, decided to start another series of studies I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, we're just going with what the Lord points us to. We're going to get through all these series eventually and God will bring up new series, new things to discuss as brothers and sisters in Christ. So I decided to do a Bible If. Where we're going to go through every Bible If there is and see some of it will apply to us. We can get instruct. some won't apply to us. We can get some instruction in righteousness from it. So if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, we're going to get to our first Bible if. Two of them. And guess who's the one doing the Bible if on this one? Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If... Thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We're going to see how does Jesus respond to the world's ifs. Okay. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for, if, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. If. Okay. Jesus said unto him, how does Jesus respond? It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if, there's another Bible if, thou wilt fall down and worship me. I call it a Bible if because it's in the Bible. It doesn't mean necessarily it's God saying it. Verse 10, Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. As we're reading here, did you know the lost world likes to give ifs? If God is so loving and so kind, why would he send a good person to hell? Okay. Uh, they'll do Bible ifs. And I honestly wish that nobody would have ever said that. You know how people like Peter Ruckman, I think Brother Brian did it in the past. I can't be 100% sure. It's been a long time. Um, I've heard people when I was in the Babel buildings... Um, they would say that you'll be shocked that there will be good people in, in hell and bad people in heaven. Uh, one of the studies I like to read is, um, or listen to with Peter Ruckman is the five surprises in hell. But I wish he would have never said that, that you're going to get there. Yes, you'll be surprised on who's there. Yes. But here's what the Bible teaches. There are no good people in hell. There are no good people in heaven. See? Uh, for there's none that doeth good, no, not one. There's none righteous. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all together become unprofitable. Uh, let's see. For there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all together, uh, gone out of the way. They've together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. There's no good people in hell. And there's no good people in heaven. Bad people are in heaven bad people are in hell. But the lost world keeps saying, if, if, if God's so gracious and loving. You'll get people attacking the major doctrines, if this or if that. The lost world's going to use ifs against us, brothers and sisters in Christ. And what is Jesus' response? It is written. The lost world can say, what if, what if. Uh, why would God send good people to hell? The Bible says there's none that doeth good, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's how you respond to Him. Oh, the Trinity this, and what if that? What does God's Word say about the Godhead? What does God's Word say dispensational teaching, the true gospel, eternal security, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, the changed life, if this, if that, what do you respond with? The Word of God. Okay. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. Just over to chapter 5, because we're going through part of Matthew. 
verse 1, we are going to read to 13. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Now he's just not teaching the people, he's teaching the disciples, the people who would follow him for a while. And if you remember the story when he starts talking about uh, the flesh, eating the flesh and drinking the blood, um, a lot of his disciples couldn't take it and they left him. And only the twelve apostles stayed with him. But right now he's speaking to the disciples. Okay, Three, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember, kingdom of heaven is the millennial kingdom. This is talked to the Jews. I understand this is Old Testament. But we're going through every single if. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Destruction of righteousness that's happening to us today. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its faith, its savior, there's the if, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Okay? There's the Bible if. The salt has lost its favor, then what's the condition? Thenceforth good for nothing. If the salt has lost its favor, it's good for nothing. 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Okay? Salt. We can do this for instruction righteousness. Remember what we talked about. When you get away from this book, you will never lose your salvation. Okay? I'm not trying to say that. Instruction righteousness. When you start fellowshipping with the wrong people like we did in the study, are your leaves withering? Um, you start hanging out with the wrong people and you start putting down this book, you, you start to lose your saltiness. You're not going to lose it completely. Don't get me wrong. Instruction righteousness. Uh, don't put this book down. Okay? Be careful who you fellowship with. You don't want God, you want God to be able to use you to the fullest. That should be your desire. God use me fully and completely. And God can only do that is if your walk with Him is strong. If you're staying in this book, you're staying in prayer, reading this book, um, studying this book, singing old hymns, true worship songs that bring glory to God, that brings peace to the soul and it doesn't rile the flesh up and please the flesh. Okay? Spiritual sacrifices, cleaning up your life, letting God clean up your life. Sanctified through thy truth. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thanks by through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay? Preaching the gospel, that way you can preach the gospel. Okay? Uh, for instruction righteousness. We, can, we, don't, we want to be as salty as possible, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you want to look at it that way. Be as salty as possible. We don't want to start losing our saltiness. Okay? Because then God can't use this other than as a bad example. And you don't want that. But as we see, there's the if. And what's the condition? If the salt has lost its savor, therefore it's good for nothing. So, the Christian life, as we talked about. Matthew 5.21. Jump down to Matthew 5.21. We're going to read the 24. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever thou shalt kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now this is Old Testament. Verse 23. Therefore, if, there's the Bible if, Thou bring the gift to the altar, thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee. Leave, so there's the if, and then here's the con that's the condition. What are you supposed to do? Leave there 
thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gifts. Okay. Instruction righteousness, the Bible if. Uh, if you're trying to uh, fellowship, and you're trying to live a good Christian life in your walk with the Lord, and there's something you have against another brother in Christ, you need to go, as they say, iron it out. But if a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ comes to you fully broken with real sorrow in their heart for wronging you, you need to have grace for them and forgive them. Now, you're going to come across people that... Um, They'll try to abuse that. They'll say they're sorry, and they'll do it again. They'll say they're sorry, they're doing it again. They'll say they're sorry, they're doing it It's almost like they're saying they're sorry, so it leaves an opportunity for them to do it again. For them to hurt you again. For them to wrong you again. Okay? But someone comes to you truly broken, saying, I'm sorry for what I did. You need to forgive them. Okay? Um, God forgave me. I came to Him with godly sorrow, and He saved me. And throughout my life, I come to Him as a, my walk with the Lord as a Christian. I come to Him when I fall into sin and temptation and I wrong God. I fall, fall before Him and I have true sorrow and ask the Lord to forgive me. And if the Lord will forgive me, a, a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner, we should be forgiven our brothers and sisters in Christ when they do wrong by us. Okay. So, like I said, if there. Okay, we need to stop... Uh, we, you don't drop your relationship with the Lord. I understand the gift there, Old Testament, coming to the altar. But for us, your walk with the Lord can hurt if you start holding grudges. Bitterness. Remember the study I did on bitterness. It's an old study, but it's a great study to go back to. Um, you can look it up on my YouTube page. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video, Video Ministries, I think, has done a couple videos on bitterness. You can't let bitterness get into you, because if you let bitterness and grudges get in, it's going to get in the way of your walk with the Lord. You need to iron that out. If that person um, is flat out, hey, I don't care, I'm going to do it, then you brush, you know, I don't want to, I want to say brush the dirt off your feet, kind of like when you preach the gospel. They don't want to hear it, brush the dirt off your feet, move on. They don't want to be sorry, then, okay, you're over there, I'm going to continue my life. I'm not going to hold a grudge, I'm not going to have bitterness, I give you to the Lord. Lord, this situation I give to you, and the Lord will take care of it. This person, if it's really bad, I let I give them to you, let you deal with it, Lord. But they come to you truly sorrowful, and you hold a grudge, and you hold bitterness, it's going to get in the way of your walk with the Lord. Okay? Don't let that happen. Okay. Matthew 5:27 uh, to 30. Matthew 5:27. Still in the same area. Uh, 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, Thou that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. It's always a heart thing. Mm -hmm. God looks at the heart. Remember the King James Bible uh, is the thoughts and discerner and intent of the heart. It can see the heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. Now there's the if, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for, the, for thee that one of thy members should perish, and that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Uh, remember the Bible says, Give him over to the destruction of the flesh, that the soul might be saved. That's what this is talking about. People like to take it out of context, but I'm talking about for instruction and righteousness for us today. 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, if right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and, that, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Making sure that's the last part. Yep. What's this talking about for us, brothers and sisters of Christ? We had to come to the Lord broken. It came to a point where there was nothing in this world that's worth going to hell. Worth me rejecting the true gospel, the true plan of salvation, and going to hell. Just did a video recently on 
uh, finding the dot 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 back door question mark because people are always trying to find a way to keep something in this world sin lust uh, physical possessions the flesh they're trying to find a way to keep that and they end up rejecting the real Jesus Christ so they can have this world and where they're going to end up if they reject Jesus Christ and die in their sins they're going to end up in hell to burn for all eternity nothing in this world is worth you going to hell and for instruction and righteousness nothing in this world brothers and sisters in Christ is worth getting in the way of your walk with the Lord you cannot lose your salvation that's why I said instruction and righteousness nothing in this world is worth coveting and affecting and hurting your relationship with the Lord nothing so we see the Bible if there and for us it's like there's nothing in this world. Okay? If it offends the Lord, it's not worth it. If you can't glorify the Lord and give thanks in it, you shouldn't be doing it. God says, get it out of your life, get it out of your life. God says, hey, you're starting to hold this above my word. You're starting to hold this above our relationship. It might not be sinful, but you can still start coveting it and hold it above the word of God in your walk with the Lord. So, um... Okay, here's a good example. I, I'm sorry, I was reading this. A good example of what we're talking about. Joshua chapter 6, verse 16, if you want to turn there. In your King James Bibles, brothers and sisters in Christ, God's perfect written word in English. Joshua 6, 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Okay, this is all the physical possessions. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that is with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed things, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. They were commanded uh, not to take anything. Okay? They only took things for the Lord, but everything else is accursed. You're not to touch it. So, as we go down, Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. Jump to Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass and they curse a thing for Achan, the son of Cami, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the cursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. He took it, understanding the consequences, but he thought it was more important, because they just said, the curse, uh, Israel, uh, make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon... Oh, no, I'm sorry. And the Lord, Lord's anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Jump down to 11, Joshua 7, 11. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies. They went to attack like they're supposed to, and they failed because God was punishing them for what um, Zabdi, or for Achan, did, taking the cursed things. And as you read the whole thing, uh, they get it, they start drawing lots to get back to him, and they ask him what he did, he admits what he did, and they ended up getting punished. Okay, he got burned, all the stuff got burned. Um, they stoned him first and then burned him. Was those physical possessions worth them, their life? That's what we see today in this world, brothers and sisters of Christ. Nothing in this world is worth going to hell. Nothing. Okay. Nothing in this world, for instruction righteousness, is worth getting in the way of your walk with the Lord. Nothing is. 
Matthew 5, 38. Okay. That is where we're getting to our next Bible if. Okay. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, there's the if. Okay. And take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. We're going all the way down to 48. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. The if there is talking about someone suing you at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Instruction righteousness here. You have some false religions where I'm good, everybody else is a dog. Everybody else is worthless and deserves to die. I'm good, everybody's dirt. My people, my brothers, my group, my cult, basically, we're all great, everybody else is dumb. Okay? As a brother and sister in Christ, you're to love the lost world by preaching the gospel to them. That's true love. But for instruction and righteousness, you can help out a neighbor. A neighbor can help you out. Okay? The lost world, you can help them out. And if they get mad at you, let God deal with it. It goes back to what we are talking about. Say, Lord, you can deal with it. Okay? You can help lost people out. You can be there for family members that are lost. Okay? Uh, you can't fellowship with the lost world. If the lost world is indulging on, in what the Bible calls a sin, you're not to be hanging out with them and doing the same thing. Okay? You're not supposed to have that in front of you. You're supposed to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? You're not supposed to be doing that. But if a family member says, hey, you know, they're getting together to talk about growing up or how are you doing, uh, the lot, like I said, a neighbor comes over and says, hey, they need help with something. They can't lift this. They need help lifting something. You can go help them. Okay? You're not to treat them like they're nothing. Okay? But true love, true love for the lost world is preaching the gospel to them. If all you do is help them out with physical things, worldly things, and you never preach the gospel to them, that's not true love. Okay? I preach the gospel to my neighbor. He's still stuck on what we just talked about, good people in hell. If God's such a gracious, loving God, why would he send good people to hell? I still wish that nobody would have used that as an analogy, period, when preaching the Bible to the lost world. Okay? You'll be shocked if there's good people in hell and bad people in heaven. No, bad people are in hell, good people are in heaven. True love for the lost world. Okay? Remember, we uh, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, but against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? The lost world is going to start coming down on us hard. And if it doesn't go against the Word of God, we're not to be fighting it hardcore. If it goes against the Word of God, we're to stand for the Word of God. Okay? So, like taxes, <laughs> you know, taxes, trying to jack up the price on everything. Uh, we're not supposed to go to war per se, you know what I'm saying? We have to deal with it. Matthew 5, 38. That's what we just did. How we treat the body of Christ and how we treat the lost world. Okay. I left that part out, talking about treating the lost world, but also how you treat the body of Christ. 
Proverbs 25, 21. Uh, if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. What I mean by the body of Christ uh, goes back to what we're talking about bitterness. You're not to hold bitterness. If a brother in Christ needs help, if I had a brother in Christ that was a neighbor, let's say if, if we're so spread thin, but let's say back in the day where a lot of people were saved all around you. If I had a brother in Christ that wronged me, and they came over and said, hey, I need help moving something or lifting something, I'd still go help them. Okay? We're not, you know, if you love those who love you, you know, the, if the brother in Christ has a problem against you and holds a grudge against you and has bitterness towards you, and he comes and asks for help, uh, I'd help him. People say, oh, that's dumb. If you only love those who love you, what reward have you? Okay. I wouldn't let them hurt me again. I wouldn't put myself in a position for them to hurt me again. You know what I'm saying? But I'd help them out. I mean, you'd help out a lost person who rejects Jesus Christ, but you wouldn't help out a brother in Christ that kind of you have problems with, struggles with. That doesn't quite make any sense. Matthew 6, 9. This is the last one for right now, and we'll continue in another part two on Matthew. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner before pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I had to say the prayer. Why? Verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespass. Okay. Once again, for us today in Structure Righteousness, you're not to hold a grudge against somebody. I have family members uh, that have wronged me. I've had, in my past, people who have lied to me. I was a false convert for the longest time. But I don't hate, hold hate in my heart for them. Am I angry sometimes? I got, do I get frustrated? But you're not to hold hate. You're to forgive them and let God deal with them. But once again, you're not to hold, have a grudge. You're not to have um, uh, bitterness. <laughs> almost forgot the word. Bitterness. Uh, you're supposed to let God deal with it. Forgive them. Let God handle them. Don't put yourself in a position to be hurt again. Okay? But you need to have some grace okay, for people. Whether it's a brother in Christ or the lost world. We're supposed to be set apart. And we're supposed to be different than the lost world. Okay? I'm not saying you should let people walk all over you. Like I said, you don't put yourself in a position to be hurt again. But you don't hold grudges and let bitterness get in the way because when you do, it's going to get in your walk with the Lord. It's going to get in the way of your walk with the Lord big time. So uh, we're going to end this part right here and we will continue into part two. I wanted these to be kind of short and not just go super long with these. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching.